This is George from High Tech Legion. Obviously the gaming community stood up and took notice when the NVIDIA announced the GTX 7 series, the 760, 770, and 780. The 7 series offers price performance that is absolutely unparalleled and is a long stretch by leaps and bounds away from anything we've seen in the past. The weapon of choice, per se, of many gamers has become the GTX 770, which the price performance on is absolutely astronomical. The 770, at any price, is an absolute phenomenal performer, uh, overtaking even the GTX 680 from the previous generation at a much lower price. Now, the GTX 770 also has become very popular because it's a very overclockable platform. Now, what if we took a GTX 770, put it on a proprietary PCB specifically geared for overclocking and higher clock speeds, along with some features that we haven't seen before for over, specifically for overclocking, uh, and threw on an overclock that is higher than most reference boards can attain. And we put that overclock on right out of the box. That's exactly what we're going to look at today, looking at the EVGA GTX 770 Classified. Getting a look at the EVGA GTX 770 Classified. First off, quick look at the box. Um, we're not really not going to spend any time there. EVGA is not known for the documentation, especially on the box, and not going to be any different here. It is 4 GB GDDR5 GPU Boost 2 GTX 770 Classified. All you're going to find on the front, on the rear, all you're going to find is a list out of the GTX 770 NVIDIA features themselves. You're not going to find anything really about the card. Uh, over here, as you see, display port, HDMI, two DVIs, and really, that's about all you're going to find. So, GTX 770 specs, and that's about it. Now, looking at the card itself, first thing you notice, the card is absolutely huge. Uh, make no mistake, it's 11 inches long. I've seen some misprints on it. This card is 11 inches long. It is 5 inches wide. That's not a misprint. As you notice, your PCI expansion slot ends here. So it is over an inch from the PCI expansion slot. That's something you're going to need to watch uh, depending on your case. Obviously the 5 inches isn't going to be a big deal unless you're working in some kind of micro case, but the 11 inches might be. Now the Classified uses the ACX cooler, which uses an absolutely gigantic heatsink. As you can see, runs through the entire size of the card and uses six direct touch heat pipes as well of varying sizes. A couple of them are huge. They appear to be at least 10 millimeter. Now the ACX fans themselves, perfectly balanced, very quiet. So you're going to get some very, very good cooling. You're also going to get some very quiet cooling, especially under average usage. Um, of course, the classified is dressed up. Very, very nice looking card. Beautiful top with the gold EVGA logos and inserts, as you see here, as well as very interesting uh, on the side facing out. You've got some little uh, slots here, silver around them and whatnot. Now, looking at the back of the circuit board, one of the things to keep in mind here, it's on a larger circuit board, not because it's got more components. It's got, it, it may have more components, but that's really not the reasoning behind it. Reasoning behind it, larger circuit board is going to allow more space between the components, which is going to allow for much better heat dissipation. So the card is going to be able to run cooler at higher clock speeds simply due to the fact that it's slightly larger. So you've got increased cooling, you've got a larger circuit board for better heat dissipation, so EVGA really is getting that covered right there. Um, as you can see, PCI Express 3.0 slot right here, and your SLI under the cover. EVGA did a nice job with the covers, as you see. On the back, typical 2 DVI, uh, display port and HDMI. It is only a dual slot card. Very thankful for that. Obviously, especially if you're going to be running an SLI, you're going to get some air between uh, the two cards, so you're going to be able to go from there. Take a look down the other end. You can see five of the heat pipes actually do come through this, and the other one wraps around the other end. And as you can see, they are not shy heat pipes. Uh, really nice looking design. Now, a couple people have said to me, oh, well, there's no backplate on here. Well, the backplate is actually, if you take a look, located right here. The backplate is actually underneath the ACX cooler and attached to the circuit board between the, uh, between the cooler and um, the circuit board. So it lays there, so you've got no flex to the card whatsoever. It is steel backplate, 
built inside. Of course, if you want to add a backplate, it is available on the EVGA site for this particular card. Um, a lot of people do like it, of course, because it does protect what you see here, as well as uh, adding a little eye candy, as you see. So great looking card from EVGA. Now going to the specs, as far as the overclock, it's um, out of the box with an 1150 megahertz base clock, 1202 megahertz boost clock. That is phenomenal. Most uh, GTX 770s will not get to that level, a reference board, no matter how much you try and overclock it. Now here's the real kicker here. And just got to locate it right here and it's not mentioned on the box anywhere, this card is actually triple BIOS. And you can see the markings right here, normal, overclock, LN2. So you can actually flash your BIOS without fear of bricking. Leave your normal BIOS alone, you'll always be able to boot into it. If you're going to be updating your BIOSes, you've got two spots to play with, you've got three selectable um, spots to boot from. So you can boot if you've got a specific BIOS when you're using LN2, boot right to it, no need to go through software. Same thing for an overclock, you want to run it normally, even downclock it to save yourself a little bit um, on the energy bill. I mean, if you're not going to be gaming, you can downclock it and run it all day uh, with very, very little power consumption, very, very little heat, fans will never spin up. So you've got the three selectable BIOSes. But the big deal there, like I say, is going to be the fact that if you leave your normal BIOS alone, you're always going to be able to boot into it. You can go in with, um, any of the BIOS tweakers for Kepler and load up any aftermarket BIOSes or tweak your own BIOS as you like it. So you've got really phenomenal performance and really incredible um, potential for overclocking with the card if you want to take it further than the already substantial overclock. Now I mentioned the uh, backplate available for the GTX 770 Classified. I do have one on hand. So just to give you an idea, uh, what you're going to go from is obviously this to this. So it is a nice dress up kit. Uh, it is a necessity if you're going to be using the water block. I, well, not a necessity, but obviously highly recommended if you're going to be using the water block. But even if you're not, it's a really nice dress up kit for the card itself and is going to look fabulous in the case. Let's get a closer look at that BIOS switch. As you can see, you've got normal, overclock, LN2, which is actually upside down in the picture here, as you see, and simple three position dip switch right here. Now, one of the other things that EVGA is offering when you register the card is you are going to get an upgrade to your BIOS. In order to flash it, you're going to have to select the BIOS you want, the normal OC or LN2. Uh, you might want to flash actually the normal and the OC as it is an update to the BIOS. Uh, so you just simply first step, select which of the BIOSes you're going to be updating. Uh, I'm going to update the normal right now, so we'll leave the switch on normal. We'll put it into the PC and we will boot up. To get the BIOS download, log into your EVGA account, head over to Member Home, and go to My Products. Now, if you've registered your GTX 770 Classified under My Products, you're going to see the uh, 770 Classified listed. And right below it, you'll see View Details right here. And on the details page, if you scroll down, you'll see warranty information, step up information, you'll see the dual BIOS download. Open the dual BIOS window, and it will come up with a full instruction set, which you might want to print out, you might want to save. Uh, either way, you're definitely going to uh, want that later on. Hit the download button and save your file. and you're going to be good to flash the BIOS. Now that is going to come down as a zip file, as you see here. Extract it, and you will wind up with a folder containing an executable, two sys files. Run your executable. It will come up with a command line window asking you to confirm that you do want to actually update the BIOS. Press yes and takes about 10 to 15 seconds, as you can see, clearing the original firmware and storing the updated firmware.
and it does just flash with an update completed successfully, uh, you don't get a confirmation, anything of that nature, and your command line window is going to disappear. At that point, all you need to do is restart, and you're going to be into your new BIOS. After completing the update, when you open up Precision X, you're going to see that your power target now will no longer be limited at 111%, it will now go to 115%. The other change you're going to see is fan speed is going to go down to 29% from 35%, so you do have a little bit more control over the fan speed and the fan curve as well on the bottom end. So, not huge uh, improvements or huge um, changes to the BIOS, but they are rather significant ones. Now that I've done the BIOS update, we're going to have a chance to take it through its paces and take a look at the benchmark results. So going through those benchmarks, I mean, there's no question that the GTX 770 Classified is just unbelievable. It buzzsawed through absolutely every benchmark we threw at it. DX9, uh, DX9 and 10 games were an absolute joke to it. Uh, it really, the power level never went above about 55% or so on DX9 uh, and 10. Even the D, uh, more stressing DX11 games like Crisis and Metro uh, last night, really didn't pose much of a problem. The GTX 770 Classified never fell into unplayable frame rates or anything that wasn't perfectly smooth. Now you look at the synthetics and it just did a phenomenal job. And of course that translated into the games as well. But comparing it to the uh, stock GTX 770 reference card, it really beat it up pretty badly in the synthetics. Uh, we did get manage to get an overclock out of it, which was pretty substantial, and got our continual speeds up to 1293 megahertz uh, across the board. So it ran at 1293 megahertz continuously during these benchmarks uh, when it was overclocked, which really is phenomenal performance from the card. Never had any problems with the cooling whatsoever. Maxed out at 74 degrees with 65% on the fan. The fans themselves, very quiet under normal operation and gaming. Even uh, only under the heaviest of loads did we ever even hear it outside of the case. I will tell you above 65-70%, it will start getting noisy and uh, up at 90% they're loud. But you're never going to see a 90% load on the fans. So all that said, the EVGA GTX 770 Classified is an easy editor's choice win uh, winner. Phenomenal performance, as we saw. Really an incredible package. The double BIOS makes it all that much better for tweakers and those who are really looking to push their overclock to the max. Uh, EVGA really thought of everything on this card, and we can really give it the highest recommendation absolutely possible.